Welcome to the Quest Forums channel. In this video, we're going to be looking at Mark chapter 12 as part of our ongoing study of the second gospel. And this follows on in Mark chapter 11 and into chapter 12, where Jesus is in a confrontation with the highest religious authorities of his day. They've decided that he has humiliated them, and so they are going to destroy him. And one of the ways that they try to do this is by sending their followers out here in chapter 12 to ask him some difficult questions, and they're hoping to put him in a situation where he'll say something that they can use against him later in order to condemn him. Now, of course, Jesus responds in a very wise way and leaves them nothing that they can use, but also, of course, they don't really care and they're going to wind up twisting things around so that they can have him killed anyway. Uh, so that's sort of the, the dynamic that we have going on at the time. But Jesus is also saying some things that are going to be of great use to his followers for generations to come. The most important of which sits in the middle and sits in this third question where Jesus is talking to a scribe. And the scribes, for the most part, were opposed to Jesus, but they weren't all, and this one at the very least is neutral. He's willing to have an honest conversation with Jesus. And so he asks him, what's the greatest commandment in the law? So Jesus has a two-part response, but the parts are so intertwined they really do belong together anyway. He first quotes from Deuteronomy chapter 6 and says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And then he also quotes from Leviticus chapter 19 and he says, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And the scribe picks up on what he's saying. He responds back to him with this comment about how loving God and loving neighbor is greater than all the sacrifices and everything that's ever been done for religion. And that is the point that Jesus is driving at, because there is this dichotomy that exists. There is a difference, in an important way, between religion and faith. And religion, a lot of times, is about the cult. And I don't mean that in a negative sense, just in a neutral sense, that it's about the practices. It's about the rituals and the sacrifices and the observations. And that's what added together becomes that culture of a religion. It's practices that unite people. And they can be very important and they can be good. The problem arises when they become all important. When doing those things, the reason why people do them is to be seen doing them. That they want recognition from other people, and they also want to earn something from God. And Jesus' point is that this is impossible. That the higher thing we need to have is faith, and we need to have devotion. That we need to look to God as already having given us everything. And when we recognize that, when we see how much love that he's shown, that we should return that love. That we shouldn't be concerned about trying to get a particular type of reward from him. But instead that we should just want to know him better. And to be more like him. And that of course is what brings the neighbor into things here. Is that as we're trying to be like God because we love God. We're also going to love other people who are made in his image. We're going to do things to serve them for their own good. Not for our own good. That's the point. It's all about becoming selfless rather than selfish. And when you do things to be observed, you're being selfish. It's about raising your own profile. But when you're doing things for someone else, you don't care. You just care about them instead. And of course, Jesus provides the capstone for this with a story that he tells at the end of the chapter, rather the observation that he makes at the end of the chapter, where they're sitting in the temple. And where the treasury would have been would basically be kind of a large courtyard. And then there would be a number of collection boxes lined up on one wall with horns leading down into them. And so the horns were there to basically keep people from sticking their hands inside and pulling something out. And of course, people would have coins that they were pouring into them. So when you'd have a large bag of coins in this open courtyard that you're pouring into horns, it's going to make a lot of noise. It's going to be very noticeable. And people, that was why they did it. They liked to be noticed. They wanted to be seen for this religious act that they were performing of making an offering. But of course, a lot of times, these offerings really didn't cost anything. It was already excess anyway. It didn't result in a sacrifice to give it away. And then Jesus compares this. He contrasts it with this widow woman who comes over and puts two little coins in that are worth hardly anything. Just about enough to buy a meal is what they would be worth today. 
but it's actually worth a lot because it's everything that she has. And she doesn't do it to be seen. She doesn't care about that. She's just devoted to God, which could maybe seem strange to us in some ways. Why aren't you concerned about your survival? But she really was because she understood that her survival came from God, that everything she had was a blessing, that it came from him, and that there was yet more to look forward to. She loved him for that, and she was giving back everything that she could. And that was what deserved notice. And God did see it. He, he was sitting on the other side of the courtyard, pointing it out. Pointing it out so that it's been seen now throughout generations. And she's held up as an example that we're using now 2,000 years later of what love for God is supposed to look like. That's an incredible testimony. And it's what we should want in our own lives. This is what we should want to reflect. As we love God, as we love the people around us, that is what we are called to do. And we should put that ahead of just doing religious things. That's the lesson in this chapter. As it is also that we are moving towards the crucifixion, which we're going to start to see coming up pretty soon. But before that, we're going to have an aside about prophecy uh, that I think will be pretty interesting to look at next time. But if you have any insights on this particular chapter, something that you want to share, maybe a question about it, or something else in the Bible, go ahead and leave that down in the comments below. Thanks very much for checking out this video, and until next time, keep looking up.